And finally tonight, a rock and roll mystery solved, perhaps. It centers on a famous Fender Stratocaster Bob Dylan played when he first went electric in 1965 at the Newport Folk Festival. Elise LeRae and Wes Cowan are two of the host sleuths on PBS primetime program History Detectives, and their investigation into the Dylan guitar airs on the season premiere tonight. I had a chance to talk to Elise LeRae about it yesterday, but first, here's an excerpt from the program. My name is Dawn Peterson. For more than 40 years, this guitar has been in my family. My dad was a private pilot for Bob Dylan. The guitar was left on one of his planes and he took it home. After he died, I watched a documentary about Bob Dylan and it showed footage of the first time that he played an electric guitar live. It looked exactly like the guitar that my dad had left in our family's attic. I want to know if this is the guitar that Bob Dylan played when he plugged in at the Newport Folk Festival in 1965. How does it feel? The story of Dylan being booed for switching to an electric guitar at the 1965 Newport Folk Festival is a legendary moment in rock and roll history. But the guitar's whereabouts have long remained a mystery. I'm in Rochester, New York, to meet Andy Babuke. He's authenticated guitars for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, cool. Huh. And there's the neck. Oh, there's the, ooh. Is and that there's the date. The 2nd of May, 64. So it's period. I mean, it's a match. This, this, is, this is the right thing, so this is great. This is really great. The guitar is dated one year and two months before Newport. But is it the Fender he played that night? My office has made what may be a breakthrough. We ran down a photographer, John Rudolph, who'd been a 17-year-old pressed up against the stage that summer night in Rhode Island. OK, so these are from the 1965 Newport Festival. He took what may have been the best and clearest images of Dylan that night and his controversial guitar. And joining me now is history detective Elise LeRae. So, Elise, you think you got the actual guitar. We just showed a little snippet of some of all the evidence you gathered. What was the key thing for you? I think the key thing was really the sum of the parts. I mean, obviously, when the fingerprints, which we're calling fingerprints, but the wood grain matched the photograph, we, we knew we, we, ha we thought we had the guitar, but it was the sum. It was really having the lyrics and the guitar case and, you know, some, some other ephemera that came with the piece and then the guitar. So it was everything together that really made it a compelling case. You, you seem to have roused something of a controversy, though, because uh, a lawyer for Dylan <laughs> claims that he still thinks he has the guitar. Yeah, there's definitely some controversy out there. Um, you know, we contacted Dylan about six months ago um, to talk about the story, mainly because we wanted to get into the Morgan Library, because that's where um, all of his lyrics are, and you have to have his permission to get in there. And we didn't know that—we didn't ever hear anything back from him saying that the guitar was stolen or that he had the guitar. And then, you know, last week, we got this statement. So. Um, we'd love to see his guitar to either learn if we made a mistake and how we made the mistake or if, you know, we have the real thing. Now, you, you lay out the importance of this guitar in, uh, in your story, its importance in rock and roll history, a uh, legendary moment in that history. But we're, I wonder if you were still surprised by the passions that it seemed to arouse from the people that you met along the way. You know, after doing the show for 10 years, passion doesn't surprise me for any piece because that's the beauty of the show. And I'm a memorabilia specialist. I've been doing this for 20 years. I, you know, I used to be um, at Christie's in the memorabilia department. So passion drives a lot of collectors. So that part, um, that part wasn't surprising to me. I think the surprise is that, you know, it's rock and roll history, and it's a pivotal moment in rock and roll history. I mean, after Dylan plugs in and goes electric, we start seeing, you know, the movement of blues coming into rock and roll. And at the same time, he's changing. We have the Rolling Stones coming in and changing. We have Hendrix changing. So it was a really big movement, not just in, you know, rock and roll history, but, again, parallel to American history. So that—it that, that, all works for me. How does a um, how does a story like this start for you? I mean, this one and others. How, how did this one in particular come your way? 
She came to us, Dawn Peterson came to us. But all the stories in the last 10 years that have come to History Detectives come from people who have really family folklore about their pieces. And they say, I think I have this piece, I want to know. And they ask us the question. And, you know, 90 percent of the time, I'm like, yeah, right. And this time, in particular, I was like, there's no way she has Bob Dylan's guitar. No one knows where it is. You know, we had called Rolling Stone and we had called uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to see if they, had, if they knew where the guitar was. And they're like, we haven't seen it in 40 years. So I was like, this is never going to be true. So they all come to us. People submit over the, over the Internet or through mail. And then we try to research it. So, so what happens to this guitar now? Could it be sold or auctioned? Would, would it have to be authenticated even more? What, 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 what's the process? Well, I mean, does it need to be authenticated anymore? No, but we do need to solve. We do need to see Dylan's guitar at some point, just to make sure. You know, we really strongly believe that we have the guitar. I'd love to see the one that's in his possession, so we can compare the two, and see really which one is the one that was used at the Newport Folk Festival. And remember, he played this guitar for you know a, a while. It wasn't just at the Newport Jazz Festival. So he went uh, folk festival. He went on and played it for a while. So, um, but. What, what happens to the guitar is really out of history detectives' uh, hands. We, you know, the story was brought to us, and for us, the story was really about authenticating the guitar and really showing the viewers the process as to what we do to go through and, you know, to authenticate something, as well as connecting it to American history and, and, and telling a compelling story. So that's what we're here to do. You know, if she sells it, if she gives it back to Dylan, if it goes to the Hall of Fame, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's not really for us to decide. That's kind of for them to decide. All right. Elise Luray of the History Detectives, thanks so much. Thanks, Jeff.